Hello everybody, how's it going? Green Lava Productions here, and today I'm going to be doing a live reaction to One Piece Chapter 908. And oh my goodness, I don't know how Oda can outdo himself in this chapter because the last chapter was crazy. Like, I don't think I've ever had any experience with the amount of craziness that went into last week's chapter. Like, I'm still thinking about it now. Like, Shanks is in Marijua talking to the Gorosei. What is he talking with them about? I need to know the answer to this, and I completely forgot about the stupid straw hat from the chapter prior to that one. So, like, we've just been getting mystery after mystery after mystery, and... Like, we're not getting any answers. I need answers. So here we go. One Piece, Chapter 908, The Reverie Begins. Tales of the Self-Proclaimed Stry Grand Fleet, Volume 38, or Lumbus Arc, at 3 o'clock p.m., drafting a pirate behavioral guide. So we have Orlumbus there. He's got a pen, and there's Columbus in front of him. And he's writing a note to... It's. It, I guess that must be the, be, the pirate behavioral guide. So, um, yeah. That's, uh, he's, he's showing his uh, apprentice how to become a pirate. The behavior guidelines to being a pirate. I don't think there are. <laughs> I don't think there are any behavioral guidelines to becoming a pirate. I think that's the whole point of being a pirate is that you can just do what you want, right? I don't know. Let's get into the chapter, shall we? Within the Pangaea Castle, with some disturbances within the Holy Land is buzzing with some disturbances within the Holy Land is buzzing. And we've got the castle there, and all of our friends are in the courtyard. This place isn't as lively as it was before, the socializing plaza. That's because of what happened earlier with the Celestial Dragon. Yeah, okay. How do you feel, Resu? Shirahoshi-san, and that's princess, the princess of the uh, Tontadas there. That's cool. My bruises have fully healed. Thank you very much, Mansheri Mansama. Man Thank you very much, Mancherry Chan Sama. That ability of yours is so lovely. That's right, she has the healing power. I forgot about that. He he he. So she she got injured by that um, incident with the Celestial Dragon, and now she's being uh, she's being uh, patched up. That's pretty cool. Foo foo foo. The largest princess in the world and the smallest princess in the world are meeting face to face. I'm sorry for being scared of you at first, Resu. Okay, so they're all getting along here, it seems like, so <laughs> it's it's almost like nothing happened. Like, oh well, yeah, there was a kidnapping that just happened, but you know what, forget about it. <laughs> it's all cool. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and so there's Neptune there. There are good humans and bad humans, just as there are fishmen, bad fishmen, and good fishmen. Because of your actions, Miasgard, we were able to resolve that dispute without having to give up what we wanted. For the next seven days, I will stand alongside Princess Shirahoshi. If the status I was born into can be of help to you and your people, then it's worth doing so. Does that mean we can beat up anybody with your permission? Asks Leo. Yeah, yeah. If it's to protect the princess, I'll, I'll take full responsibility. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So he's really uh, stretching himself out to help them. That's that's cool. Vivi Sama, I'm very sorry. I should have been standing by your side, Pell. Pell, where's Papa? Earlier he was given a letter by Marine Admiral Fujitora. So now he's in a meeting with him and King Riku of Dressrosa. Okay. So we're getting some stuff with Cobra going on here. Meanwhile, at the entrance to the Pangaea Castle grounds... We've got this awesome spread there of Celestial celestial Dragon Gate. That's pretty cool. We're getting very, um, very Game of Thronesy in this in this arc. Very um, Game of Thronesy and very, uh, very Lord of the Ringsy. Just very, um, very kind of mystical kind of vibes coming out here. Even with that like um, that sort of signage that Oda's got going there with the like kind of like the scroll that unfurls and, and shows the name of the of the place celestial dragon gate entrance to the domain of the gods it's pretty cool though there's some trees outlining and then there's uh, some brick and then there's a nice little bridge going across from from that sort of uh, plaza to the to the castle there are three heavily guarded gates Pangaea castle okay Wee, 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 sweet kingdom queen dowager Connie. 
<laughs> oh, your sorbet kingdoms. Okay. New character, it seems like. I don't think we've met her before. I could be wrong, but... Sorbet Kingdom Queen Dowager County. It almost seems like that would be an island in Totland, doesn't it? Like that would be one of the ministers of Totland. Sorbet. Okay. This is the Celestial Dragon Gate. Queen Dowager County. The domain of the gods is through this gate. I can't let you pass, so please return to the main castle. It's dangerous here. Ow, oh, it hurts. Unforgivable. Damn you, Miasgard. Okay. St. Charlos, please calm down. <laughs> We've got Charlos on the ground there with his face beat in. And, uh, yeah, if it was possible for him to look even more ugly than he did, he, he looks pretty ugly in this. So, yeah, I don't feel the least bit bad for him, though. You'll open up your wounds if you don't. I will not let him get away with this. I'm trying to do my best sort of impression of, uh, of Charlos there. Huh? What happened? Open the gates, St. Charlos was injured. He needs to be treated immediately. So he needs to get into the castle to be to be treated. Okay, and the gates are opening up, and is that where the slaves are kept or something? Probably, huh? There's that slave that's crawling out that um, was the one that tried to kidnap Shirohoshi. Oh, Charlos, are you all right? I heard about what happened, and I was and was on my way to pick you up. And now we've got World Noble Celestial Dragon Saint Rosward. Rosward? I thought his name was Roswald. Okay. Rosward. Okay, and that would be Charlos's father, if I remember correctly, from uh, Sabaody. Saint Rosward. Fa fa father. Father, help me. What did they do to you, my precious son? W huh? Where did the tw Queen Dowager go? Don Quixote Miasgard is an old man. He's a celestial dragon that doesn't own a single slave. And there's Kuma. Kuma's being treated like a slave. I did not expect to see that. I mean, I knew he was turned into uh, PX0, so I thought he would be like the strongest sort of pacifista. But I did not expect for him to be like frickin' treated like a, like a, like a slave in Marijua. Like, he's strong. I would think that they would use him as like a fighter or something. Wow, though. That's crazy. He's got swords lodged into him, too. That's crazy, man. He's just like Homing, who descended to the surface over 30 years ago. The Don Quixote family is full of nut jobs, I tell you. Okay, so the Don Quixote family is pretty much looked down upon in Marijua. They're kind of like the lesser sort of class of, of Celestial Dragon, probably because of the fact that they're actually nice people. Other than Doflamingo, they're all pretty much nice people. So... Father, that's, that's, that's the imbecile clay slave, Kuma. It is. I was finally my turn, it was finally my turn to rent him again. Rent him? Man, I, I can't, it's, it's, it's really hard to see Kuma treated with such disrespect. Like, the dude is top tier. Like, he, he's... And I don't think I've said, I don't think this has been said enough, but he's pretty much, I think, at least one of the top three, if not the top two, Shishibukai. Like, other than, other than Mihawk. Because you have to remember that he defended the Sunny from Marines for, like, a year. At least a year during the time skip. Like, him, just him alone defended the Sunny from, like, an onslaught of Marines. Do you have any idea how strong you would have to be to do that? Like, Kuma's got some mad strength, man. I'm, I'm surprised to see the fact that he's being treated like this. It's really, it's, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Hitting him is fine, so they're just whacking him over the head. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's par for the course if you're a Celestial Dragon, just to beat people over the head. Stabbing him is fine, of course, because there's knives in him, too. 
It's horrible. I'm sure they treat pretty much all their slaves that way, though. I can't believe I ran into him so soon. My infiltration mission is a success. Oh, and that was Bonnie the whole time. Okay, so there's Bonnie doing some uh, some CP0 shit going on there. But that's absolutely unforgivable. Okay. Okay. How did she get away? I thought she was... Oh, I have to remember this. I forgot who it was. It was Akainu, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was Akainu who kind of, like, took her. And so I guess it would make sense that she's in Marijua. That's interesting. And so she must have gotten away, and then she infiltrated. She infiltrated the Holy Land, it looks like, and she, she put on the disguise of an old woman, right, because she has the age fruit, so she can become older if she wants to. Wow, okay. There's another curveball thrown at us there. That's cool. But that's absolutely unforgivable. He doesn't scream and he doesn't cry. He's a top-class slave. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm so jealous, Daddy. Ooh, I'm so jealous, Daddy. Wait, that doesn't matter because I'm about to die. Wow. So there's Bonnie having some uh, some sort of... Uh, Emotions for Kuma there. Beneath. Don't get so worked up, Sabo. Okay, and Sabo's back. Cool. The ground. Oh, you boys are so scary. It's impossible not to be. One of our comrades has ended up in a situation like that. The gentle Kuma. Okay, and so there's a cave underground. That's kind of what we thought was the case. Um... Yeah, that giant guy, I forgot what his name is, the one of the commanders of the Revolutionary Army, but the guy that has the power to just sort of liquidate uh, rocks and earth and stuff. He's sort of um, built a shelter for the revolutionaries under the red line there. And and uh, Steli, I think, saw him in one of the chapters back when, so that's how we sort of got a clue as to the fact that he was doing that. I know we all feel the same way as you do. Is it too cramped? Should I make it more spacious? There's no way we can leave Kuma-san to this fate. That's the reason we came here after all. Okay. Okay, and so we've got Sabo there. And then, then there's that that big cloaked figure. Is that that crow guy? I don't know. Or maybe Oda's just keeping him in silhouette for some reason. However, even if we do rescue him... He won't return to being the Kuma we once knew. But Kuma-chan's life itself has been sacrificed to the world government. Because he was the former king of a country allied with the world government, they decided to make an example of him for the world to see. Okay, and then we got uh, Randolph there. That's cool. They wanted to show that the power of a person is irrelevant. He's their, he's their example of what happens when you defy the gods. The Celestial Dragons control CP0 and the Marine HQ. If we do this poorly and get caught, there is no poorly. We have two options, success or death. All right, so it's all or nothing here. To gather here in the Holy Land every four years, please take your seats. This large conference that is about to take place is known as... Hmm, Wano isn't an allied country. In other words, it's a lawless area. So we've got all these royals there. There's uh, Wapple and uh, and uh, Dalton. Well, if we don't know, well, we don't know if it has the proper structure of a country. Money has to be involved for the Marines to make a move. So they know what's going on in Wano right now. That's interesting. After their attempted assassination of Big Mom, will they try for Kaido's head next? So they're bringing up the straw hats already. That was quick. <laughs> How daring of him to cause a worldwide disturbance over and over again. Straw hat Luffy. You got that right. Wah. What's so funny, Prodence? Okay. Okay. <laughs> we got some allies and some enemies of, uh, of Luffy just going at each other here. Yeah, we kind of knew this was going to happen. And we've got Cobra. The chairman changes each time. Luffy Coon. Who is it this time? It's me. And there's King Hamburger. 
Oh, uh, pretty Uncle Sammy looking guy there with the with the red nose and the and the and the uh, the star hat. That's pretty cool. Fourth of July. I hope we see more of him during Fourth of July, because in all likelihood, Reverie will still be going on at that point. So, yeah, that's just me talking. <laughs> it's me. It's nice to meet you all. Bollywood, eh? It's nice to meet you. Oh, and there's a okay, and there's more royals there. There's that guy kind of looks British, like he's got the British helmet on a little bit. Okay, looks like this will be over quickly. And there's fucking Hitler there. It looks like with the fucking Hitler mustache and like Nazi, small little Nazi um, uh, sunglasses there. Where's he from? Have we seen him before? We may have seven days together. But that's not even not enough to discuss everything. Right now, all right now, kings of the world, as usual, let's carefully discuss the matters of this beautiful world. The reverie. Okay, and there's a round table there with the world government logo in the middle. And all the kings and queens of the world are just all in this circle there. That's a beautifully drawn panel there by Oda. Translator's note, Oda spelled reverie as lev Eli. Yes, with a space. In the original chapter, we will stick to reverie as levelly doesn't make much sense. Okay. So that um, that romanization of reverie was, was added uh, later by the translators. Okay. What's up with Oda doing these, like, interesting spaces all of a sudden? Like, Marie Joie is now Marie Joyce with a G. <laughs> uh, it's like these, these things that we knew, that we thought were... were Spelled a certain way, the, like our whole lives have just been completely thrown out the window by Oda in this arc. Awesome. Okay. All right, Gorose time, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like the conference has started. King Cobra of Alabasta has requested a meeting with us during this, this conference. The Nefertari family were the only ones of the founding 20 members who decided to remain on the surface 800 years ago. In other words, they are traitors. So they view the Nefertari family as traitors. Well, this is an interesting turn. I wonder what's going to go down with uh, with Vivi and Cobra then. Did he figure something out? Let's hope he doesn't make things complicated. Because Cobra knows about the Poneglyphs. Too. The balance of the world cannot be maintained forever. It seems like there is a need for a great cleansing. Whoa. Okay, there is some frickin' uh, genocidal undertones going on there. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> a great cleansing. Okay. I wouldn't put it past the world government, though, because they're some pretty nasty bastards. They did wipe out Ohara, after all. And there's a a finger with a with a butterfly. What what did what was Shanks talking with them about? We're not going to hear that conversation. Why, Oda? I want to know. I need answers. This is the whole point of this chapter was for me to get answers, and I have not gotten one answer yet, and I'm starting to get annoyed. I need to find out, because it's just been hype and hype and hype and hype and hype, and I need to find answers. I need answers. Inside the room of flowers. Okay. Im Sama. Everyone has arrived. And there's a cloaked figure. It's not the same cloaked figure as before, though, because the, the other cloaked figure had a, had a crown on. Okay, so we've got two cloaked silhouetted figures. So we're getting more mysteries here. More mysteries. Okay, and there's a sword in the in the posters, the wanted posters of uh, Luffy and Blackbeard, and a picture of Shirahoshi. It looks like because Shirahoshi's not wanted, so it's just a picture of her. That's interesting. So they must know that they must have some idea that Shirahoshi is an ancient weapon. Otherwise, they wouldn't know, like they wouldn't have that type of like interest in her. I wouldn't think anyway. And there's Luffy and there's Blackbeard. Okay, and is that Vivi there? I don't know. It almost looks like Vivi. Is that like a a cutaway to Vivi or something? Okay. 
So this figure is going up the steps to the empty throne. The empty throne, the soon to be not empty throne would be my guess. Yeah, they're they're sitting down on the empty throne there. Oh, Im Sama kneeling down. We the five elders are here before you. There is another person above the girl say in the one piece world. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. There's a king of the world. There's a king of the world, dude. Someone is sitting on the empty throne. Okay. Okay. I knew they wouldn't just build the throne just to be empty. We, the five elders, are here before you. The light that needs to be extinguished from history. Have you decided who it should be yet? If you have... Please tell us their name. And there's a dot, 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 dot. Okay. We got one answer solved, which is if there was somebody more powerful than the Gorosei in the One Piece world. That was it. But is that the same figure from before that, that was uh, looking at that big straw hat? It can't be because... That 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 other figure had um, had a big like spiky crown, and this person doesn't. It's just a pointy-headed person. It could be the same person with a different hat on, maybe. I don't know. And we got a break next week, of course. What was Shanks talking with them about? The certain pirate. Who was that? Was that Blackbeard? Like, I think it was Blackbeard. I don't know who else. I mean, it could have been Luffy, but honestly, I don't think. It couldn't have been Shirahoshi. Because Shirahoshi's not a pirate. But it's, it's Shirahoshi, it's Luffy, and it's Blackbeard. I'm guessing one of those three people was... The person Shanks was talking to them about. And it couldn't have been Shirohoshi, because Shirohoshi's not a pirate. So we'll find out. Oda is giving us more mysteries, and I'm starting to just cringe with the amount of like anticipation that I'm getting from this arc. Yeah. Alright. That's my live reaction, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time. On a final note, I want to say thank you to everybody that liked and subscribed to the channel after the last video. I was honestly blown away by the amount of positivity that I got from it. Um, I came in with four subscribers, and last I checked, I have 89 right now. So thank you guys so much, and there will be more of these to come.